Uh, I would like take offense to that and stuff, but uh, like I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, um, I I'm not like the butthead of radio, cause that that would make me like a dillweed. <laughs> The Beavis and Butthead of Radio, huh? Well, we haven't been called that one yet, I guess. I like Toxic Twins myself. That one... Carol was getting very upset Yeah, that we were talking about John Glenn. Yes. Because I guess she had to figure that we were just goofing on John Glenn. For the sake of goofing on John Glenn. No, the whole space shuttle thing uh, that we all just watched an hour ago is a complete joke is what it is. Aren't, don't people understand what that, that is? It was a publicity stunt. That's all it is. It was a big commercial for NASA. Yeah. That's all it is. It's like a rating sweep thing for NASA. Yeah. It's what do you think? It's cute to send a seventy seven year old guy into space under the guise that it's to see what the elderly act like in space? Not that, what a, oh, let's put the elderly in battlefield too. See what it acts like in they act like in battle. Yeah. Or he, uh, whatever. It's a big publicity thing for NASA. It's a way to spark some interest in the program. Because, uh, That's it. quite honestly, let's all uh, think here. When was the last time we, we sat around and watched the, the space shuttle take off? Everyone got roped in and watched it. They knew everyone was going to watch it, so what did they have? A bunch of huge money sponsors um, uh, had their shuttle commercials all ready in the can and were broadcasting them during the countdown and the launch. Mm -hmm. They made a bloody fortune. Of course. On tourism, funding for the, uh, the the space program now. So I'm supposed to sit here with a tear in my eye, a nostalgic tear in my eye, because Walter Cronkite is dragged out of retirement to mumble <laughs> yeah. through the launch? <laughs> and we're not supposed to notice? We're supposed to talk about it like, oh, wow, it's great. They got Walter because he was there for the first launch of John Glenn. And we're supposed to sit there like, oh, this is so cool. The guy couldn't talk. Right. You don't drag a guy out of retirement and, and sits there mumbling at the table. And he's playing with his little Lego set. I'm not going to sit and make believe that this is all wonderful. Yeah. It's a big publicity stunt. Of course it is. Now, if you saw John Glenn in space in 1962, that's great. You have that memory. It's cool. Yeah. You don't need to relive it by setting him up at, at 77 years old. That's all. That's all we're trying to say. There's a, a bunch of other people that... uh. Could have gone on the shuttle. Uh, actually, done they've, some uh, good. They've bumped a lot of people that have been working their whole lives to go up into space so they could make room for John Glenn. Yeah. You, you've heard about the lady astronaut by now. Yes. She wasn't allowed to go up a, a long time ago, and now she's uh, pretty much as old as John Glenn and as fit as John Glenn. She's like, well, you guys bumped me because you didn't want women in space way back when. Well, mm -hmm. what about me? John I'll, Glenn. I'll, I'll test the, uh, the aging on a body up in space. He had his shot in space it was wonderful american hero there are other younger astronauts that want a uh, time in space mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous that everybody gets all uh revved up over this and it's it's amounts to nothing more than a publicity stunt for nasa we got roped in name the last shuttle crew that went up go ahead now one person out there could do it you can't remember the last shuttle crew they've been launching these things to no audience people watching lucy reruns forever instead of shuttle launches you know, the media could make a big deal about a plane taking off at LaGuardia at this mm -hmm. point. If they said tomorrow that uh, Walter Cronkite was going to be, you know, uh, a pilot on one of these jets, yeah, it would, be a, <laughs> it would be all over TV, and we would go down to LaGuardia to check it out. 1998 is going to go down as the year of, of bull mm. S. Yeah. yeah. It's the year, all the, the records with baseball and stuff, and, and even Sammy Sosa, who didn't set the record, he's got to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. El Duque needs a parade. John Glenn needs a huge audience to watch him go back into space. Everyone's making up these fake, like, feel-good things. And, Anthony, let me bring this point up. Haven't we landed on the moon a few times? Yeah. And now we're just uh, all thrilled and happy that a 77-year-old guy can... Go back into space on a, a shuttle? At this point, I hope a 77-year-old guy can go into space. You know what that's like? Someone hitting 20 homers next year in the <laughs> National League and everyone cheering. And everyone cheering about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of all these staged, feel-good things mm -hmm. that are being pushed in front of us that we're supposed to get a nostalgic tear for or jump for joy for and not mock and goof on and call for what they really are. There you go. It takes away from the real things that are going on in the world, uh, it kind of it's a distraction. When President Clinton, I watched him at uh, the Kennedy Space Center. He was shedding a tear Anthony. after the launch. He was very emotional. Shedding today. a tear, talking about pride and everything. And I'm sitting there laughing, going, "Does anybody remember this guy shoved a cigar in a, a woman <laughs> in the Oval Office?" 
Is anyone looking at this guy and not thinking that? And why do you think he was actually crying, Anthony? Because he wasn't on that shuttle, getting his ass away from Hillary. Exactly. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not falling for any of this stuff. No. That's it. There you go. Some commentary from uh, Beavis and Butthead. Uh, uh. Oh yeah. Wait, no. We're the Beavis and Butthead radio. John Glenn. I, uh, I bet he pooped his pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he left a big load um, uh, uh, on the booster rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big load of crap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's because that's all we do. That's all we do here. We're just in the yes, afternoons. Yes, great. All right, the fax line is 212-957-WNEW. The phone line, 212-757-1027. <laughs> you farted. <laughs> on the way, so Billy Idol and Rush next. More fart humor on the way because we don't have brains. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, rock. Yeah, yeah. You're listening to the Beavis and Butthead of radio. Uh. As dubbed by Carol Miller. Yes. Thank you, Carol. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Eve 6 inside out. Billy Idol in there and Rush 2. Don't forget, it's another NEW world premiere broadcast. A new release from Rush, different stages, recorded live over the last two tours. We're going to do that next Wednesday for you at midnight right here on The Rock of New York. NEW. Topi and Anthony. And we're full of angst today. Ah. Well, uh, not any more than usual. Well, we're always full of angst. Yeah. It's just a good way to do a radio show, actually. <laughs> you can't be content. You can't be happy. The second you're happy and content, uh, you're out of it. That's true. Out of the game. Well, um, Question everything. Everyone saw the space shuttle launch, and we just got the audio carted up of Walter Cronkite playing with the Lego set. <laughs> we're going to play that for you in a little while and, and comment on it. Yeah, there was a little hold in the launch a couple of times, and um, Walter f uh, took that moment to pull out the little toy shuttle and explain the launch. I didn't understand a word he was saying. No. I have a pretty good grasp on uh, the space program, mm -hmm. shuttle. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he was talking about. Well, in case you missed it, we'll play it for you in a bit. My very much. <laughs> Walter Cronkite live here in Kennedy Space as the tech offensive shows we cannot win the Vietnam War. He didn't say much, actually. No, he sat there and the CNN guys were yapping back and forth. Yeah. Let's see. Well, we got a pile of faxes. People want to hear Bob Hope in space <laughs> from yesterday. Well, now that would be... Putting an older American in space and getting entertainment at the same time. Yeah, because he would do some monologue. He'd do his shtick. Really? Nice. Well, what do we got there? Oh, we're just making some deals behind the scenes. I see that. Okay. Oof. I love Pepsi. All right. Um, <laughs> is that Plugola? I don't know. Oh, okay. Not for that. You sure? No, I don't know. I was just offered a threesome if, if I said that, so. A threesome? <laughs> yeah. Who are the lucky guys? Who <laughs> you got me? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. People want to hear Bob Hope in space. All right. Are you done? Yeah, let's hear Bob. Ah. Hey, I got to tell you, this is Bob. Where the hell's the Grim Reaper Hope? It's great to be here on the space shuttle. Hey, that payload section's big enough for Charo's ass, isn't it? <laughs> ah, how about that Brooke Shield? <laughs> hey, my eyes are bleeding. Hey, is that a sunset or blood on my corneas? <laughs> I, I can't tell. But I got to tell you, hey, how about that zero gravity, huh? Hey, my ball sack's bouncing around like a hippity hop. <laughs> wow. It's like I got a pound of melted Turkish taffy in my underwear. <laughs> hey, John Glenn, pass the Viagra. I got to take a leak. <laughs> wow. Can't even leak without Viagra. <laughs> yeah. My prostate looks like the surface of the moon. Ouch. Hey, where's Susan Anton? Hey, me and Bing are making a new film, On the Road to the Cemetery. <laughs> ah. Hey, from the space shuttle live, I want to say hi to my wife for 70 years, Dolores. I don't want to say she's dry, but boy, that'd be a tough re-entry. <laughs> ah. She couldn't get wet in a rainforest. Ah. Hey, John, is that a black hole? I haven't seen a black hole since I showered with Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> ah. Hey, my eyes look like two flaming meteors. I don't want to say my eyes are shot, but ah, one time in Vegas, I went down on Sinatra's toupee. And I thought it was Dolores, my wife. Ah. Hey, what's this mission control? I'm still working on bowel control. Ah, my roids are hanging like tapestry. Ah. 
Hey, I gotta go, but you've been great on the space shuttle. Thank you. <sighs> Glad you're missing control. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> That's how I'm building. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, the latest from the Black Crows. That's kicking my heart around. The new CD is going to be called By Your Side. Good afternoon. It's Opie. It's Anthony. Hello. And we are rocking and rolling once again today. <sighs> I'm kind of ticked off at the mayor again. Again or still? Well, the mayor um, wants to catch the human fly. The guy that base jumped from the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's talking about it all over town. And um, he, he he wants to catch him, and he's putting the whole police force, you know, on the case. And when they find him, they'll arrest him. But I just don't like this quote here. Giuliani sounded equally peeved, saying, I know it gets a, a great deal of attention, and it's really a stupid and jerky thing. It's a very dangerous thing to do, not only for him, but for the people below him. <laughs> how dangerous is it really for the people below him let's see how many people have been killed by parachutists falling from buildings in recent years not many how many people have been killed by other assorted items falling from buildings exactly <laughs> it's a little hypocritical don't you think i think more people die from things falling from buildings than uh the human fly falling from the sky plus the fact there was a report in the paper yesterday 28 deaths because of cabs last year and, and 26,800 people injured by taxi cabs. And the mayor is worried about the human fly. And uh, balloons for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And balloons. Yeah. He's worried about the human fly. He's worried about our Thanksgiving Day uh, balloons. Bubble gum on the sidewalks. Don't Wor forget that. Worried about the bubble gum on the sidewalks. How many people were injured by Thanksgiving Day Parade balloons in the last 30 years, Anthony? One. One. Thank you. That's one too many. How many people injured by cabs last year alone, Anthony? 26,000. 800 and some odd people. Let's do the math. So, I just hate hypocrisy. Mayor McCheese. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a blast. I just hate hypocrisy. It's all over this fine world of ours. Yeah. So Somebody painted a couple of swastikas on his house. Yeah, I saw Did that. see that? That's not cool, obviously. Got in trouble for that. And also, uh, he's making a cameo on The Guiding Light. <laughs> he's playing himself, and he'll marry two of the soap's main characters. Har Harley Davidson Cooper. I think that's more dangerous than the human fly floating around the city. <laughs> and making yeah. appearances on soap operas. Yeah, and, and Philip Spaulding. I love soap opera names. My name is Brant. <laughs> Brant Chase. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what goes on on The Guiding Light. I'm sure it's a very wholesome show with no sex ever going on. Oh, never. Right? He wouldn't align himself with something, uh, something so gutter like. Yeah. Like strip joints. Oh, that's right. He closed those things. Yeah, and someone wants to hear the, uh, telemarketer call that we did late last night in the show. Oh, my God. Which one was that? What? I hope it's the one where, um, they were calling for new cabinets. Oh, you want that one? I like that one. Okay, we could play that. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Sophie, it's Anthony. Woo. And Anthony, CNN has just showed John Glenn's takeoff for the 20th time. All right. Godspeed, Johnny. Good luck to you, Johnny. Godspeed, Johnny. Seems they've had a little uh, anomaly aboard the space shuttle, Opie. Anomaly? What's that? Well, it seems like uh, one of the, a, a small door at the base of the tail section has come loose. Whoops. Yes, the door that houses the uh, chute that comes out and stabilizes the shuttle on the runway at, uh, after it lands. So, Anthony, they're going to discuss this fact on CNN for the next three hours. Three hours. Can you sum it up in ten seconds what's going to happen? Uh, it should be fine. Everything's going to be fine, right? Everything will be dandy. Usually it's uh, used, the chute to hold the shuttle straight on uh, heavy crosswinds down the runway. All right, so don't bother tuning in CNN for the next three hours as they discuss that. Well, that was a reverse angle of the uh, liftoff. Yeah, it seemed like it was a little different, actually. Oh, launch gantry shot. There he goes again. Good luck, Johnny. Godspeed, Johnny. Godspeed, Johnny. I want CNN to report the real important stuff, like... You know, report the first time he takes a dump in space. Everyone wants to know. That how, would be how it's very be. interesting. Yeah. But what about Walter Cronkite? Ooh. 
So Walter Cronkite, who was there during John's first flight into space. Godspeed, Johnny. Godspeed to you, Johnny. Godspeed. He had to be there, Walter, to uh, call it for play-by-play. And during the holds in the countdown, the first hold, there seems to be a switch problem, computer switch problem. Um, plenty of redundancies on the shuttle, Opie. If I may pull out my model here. For the audience, see here in the booster section, let me pull this peel away, away for you and take my pointer. Oh, I right see. here, yes. there's a box. Now, let me take the cover off this. Do you see it? Okay, This yes. is where the switch was located, but everything's fine now. Okay. So they were able to uh, count down again from nine minutes. Then they had to hold it five minutes because the Slappy and Wappy radio show in Orlando, I think, uh, had a flyover. <laughs> You think it's going to be a radio stunt? Some uh, airplanes <laughs> yeah. got into the airspace, <laughs> Yeah, the restricted airspace. And they said they were sky riders. Yeah, sky riders. Like, no one's supposed to be within 10, 20 miles of the liftoff, and I'm, they were sky riders. <laughs> I'm sure it's like, hey, listen to Sticks Franklin, weekday afternoons on Rock 98. <laughs> Actually, I think they were trying to write Baba Booey in the sky. <laughs> uh, yeah, Here, here's the call you'll hear yeah. tomorrow. Um, yeah, Howard? Yeah. Um, I tried flying my plane over the shuttle, and I, it, it, people just think it was Bob that did it. But I was trying to write Baba Booey. And they chased me out before and, I could finish? Yeah, before I knew it, an F-16 had shot a missile in my ass. And uh, I plummeted to the earth. But, uh, you know, it's for you. You're the king. Get out of here, moron. <laughs> so Walter Cronkite was supposed to do the play-by-play. -play. Yeah. I don't think this guy could uh, call a play-by-play -play for a, a, a t-ball game at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what was going on? And they're all staring at him, right? Oh, it was frightening. It was frightening, and I, I just wish the CNN guys would take over. But they're acting like it was very interesting what Walter Cronkite had to say. You know, at one point, my own grandfather uh, was running numbers for the mob back in the 40s. And then after a while, he was just content sitting on his chair watching the Mets lose. <laughs> There's a certain time where you just can't go back and do what you used, used to, to do. do. And uh, Walter Cronkite doing this, it was kind of sad. Yeah, I'm sure everyone f found it all cute and nice, but I thought it was pretty pathetic. You're like egging him on, like, come on, get the next word out, Walter. <laughs> at one point, I was scared. I thought he was going to pull out his stuff. <laughs> he, was just, he was just sitting back in his chair and leaning. And... Well, everyone's talking over him. Yeah. They had the, the CNN table out there by the launch site, and everyone's just talking back and forth over Walter. And at one point, he just leaned back in his chair. I thought he was going to fall backwards. <laughs> and then we thought he was just going to pull it out and start working it. <laughs> well, since I'm not doing anything, I've got a booster rocket in my pants. <laughs> Amen on the John Glenn comments. But you missed the real reason he's back in space. Political payoff for running interference on the Clinton campaign fund scandal. Oh, there you An go. article from today's slate follows. Okay, can't wait to read the article. A little conspiracy theory there. All right, do you like want to you want to um, play the audio of Walter Cronkite breaking out his Lego uh, space shuttle model? Yeah, let's hear a little of Waldo. Waldo. <laughs> Waldo Cronkite. Okay, so he's he's sitting there with the CNN guys, and he and he pulls out this Lego model. And he's he's talking about it like it's the first time there's ever been a shuttle launch. He's explaining, yes, like this is the first time this has ever happened in the history of the space program. Let's take a listen. You take those models and put them up here and show what's going to happen right. in the launch profile immediately after the, the engine start. If the, the countdown is picked up, we'll just drop this. Uh, sure, go right we'll, ahead, Walter. We'll, we'll drop it. Go ahead, Grandpa. It. Whatever you want, Walter. <laughs> but but it, it goes uh, about like this. The... Uh, uh, at, uh, at T minus 10 seconds, the command go for main engine uh, start. And then T minus 6 seconds, uh, these three main engines here at the base, or the rear of the, of the orbital uh, spacecraft, uh, 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 they ignite. Now they've got to reach 90% of their thrust by T minus 2, or there's an automatic shutdown. 
at T zero. That's the launch time. The solid rocket boosters oh, here oh. on the side. Is this they what happens like, every space yeah. shuttle like mission? Up. The, the on board back. computers command to hold down bolts uh, there uh, to be blown, and that launches the thing wow. into beginning its mission. And oh, that's, that's at how that they point, do it. There's no right. turning back. Uh, 140 uh, million horsepower. Yes. It's hard uh, to turn it around. Yeah. <laughs> Seven million pounds That's of thrust. Right. I like when I get prune. Cracker. Now, <laughs> and there you go. Walter Cronkite ex explained exactly what we were going to see, even though we've all seen probably a hundred space shuttles take off. Actually, I thought they were going to use a slingshot this time, Anthony. <laughs> a big catapult. I'm glad he explained it to us this time. Well, this was a diversion, a non-event that they tried to make into a big event. And uh, just to, to divert us, once again, another happy, warm, fuzzy feeling we're supposed to get from this, like we were from uh, the home run record and, and all the other things that, that they put in front of you. The ticker tape parades. Everyone's got to get a ticker tape parade. Watch. He's going to get it. John another. Glenn. Here he is with the Canyon of Heroes once again. John Glenn. <laughs> it's getting to the point where, like, the hot dog guy, if he gives you a hot dog with the, the right stuff on it, he's going to get it. Canyon of Heroes. Here he is. Oh, Lock yeah. Mau. <laughs> oh, Anthony? CNN uh, showing the uh, launch of John Glenn's space shuttle for the 25th time. All right. God speak, John. Good luck to you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Nirvana. Unplug this time around. Soapy and Anthony. Oh. Anthony, I got some very good news for you. Yeah. You know how we've been keeping track of our CD sales here in New York? Yes. We have a CD out. It's called Opie and Anthony's Demented World. We've sold over 40,000 copies all over the country. And that's something. Um, but we haven't sold a lot in New York, and we'll admit that here. Yeah. But we've been making a huge push to increase CD sales. Mm -hmm. We've talked to our record company, Restaurant Records. We've talked to the distributor, got everyone on the case, and they've been going full force to make sure those uh, CDs are all over New York so you guys can buy them. Right. It's been a major problem. We've been on them for the last, what, two months? We've talked about it a couple of times, yes. We had them on the air, had the distributor on the air, record company. Really pounded the issue home that we've gotten emails and phone calls from people that want to pick up the CD. Uh -huh. They go into the stores in New York and cannot find the CD. And the reviews on the CD have been fantastic. So it's not a problem of the CD sucking. Right. And we've been making a tremendous push forward with this project. Yes, Opie. Are you ready to find out how many CDs we have sold this week in New York, Anthony? You mean it finally worked? Are you ready? Are you excited? Finally worked. We're getting some numbers in New York, the market we're in. Okay. Drum. They actually stocked some stores so people could find this thing. Drum roll, please. Now, in the past, we've sold 24 a week, 12, 15. Which is ridiculous. Mostly in the teens. Last time it was like, yeah, we sold 12. It was like 12,000. All right. <laughs> That's a good start. It's like, no, 12. 12. All right. So it's got to be up there now. All right. Drum roll, please. All right. Opie and Anthony's Demented World CD in the past week has sold one copy. One effing copy! One? One CD was sold. One CD. One. <laughs> we reach one million people a week. We sold one CD. One. <laughs> one. What? <laughs> one. <laughs> one. <laughs> You know what that means? We gotta restock the shelves. They the shelf. <laughs> they they found the only CD that was out there. It's like where's Waldo? Where's Opie and Anthony's The Men Who Are on CD? They found it. When will the record <laughs> company understand this isn't like it isn't a scavenger hunt? It's not a game to make it difficult for people to find it. <laughs> <sighs> One CD. One. CD. One. We are selling more copies of our Demented World CD in cities across America that have never heard of us. <laughs> <laughs> that is pathetic. <laughs> so there you go. There you have it. We get record companies that listen to us, right? Yeah. Columbia, Atlantic. Mm -hmm. G can we have a real record company, please? <laughs> We're begging you. Get this damn restaurant records out of our hair. <laughs> Obviously, they don't want to work with us. Yeah. I call them uh, every week, every single week, seeing what's going on with our little project. Whew. 
And because of my efforts, we sold one CD this week. One CD. Thank God you pounded them. One CD. And pestered them, or, or we wouldn't have sold any. Yeah. If you think we're lying, uh, I know we have a lot of record stores that listen to us. Look it up for yourself on SoundScan. One CD. And see how many Opie and Anthony's Demand World CDs sold this week in New York. That's good, because next week we only have to sell two to increase sales by 100%. There you go. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. I believe you can get a copy of uh, our Demand World CD through the NEW website. I think you got to wait about uh, five months, though, to get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have the latest from the Goo Goo Dolls on the way and some Bruce Springsteen. Stay there. It's the Goo Goo Dolls with Slide on the Rock of New York. 1027 WNEW. You're hanging with Opie and Anthony. Now, tomorrow we start the um, evolution of rock, of the Rock of New York. Yes. So we're not going to be able to talk too much tomorrow. No. No, we're not, Opie. Actually, we're not going to be able to talk much for the next 10 days. Yeah. It's not easy for us to gonna, not talk. They're going to put muzzles on us for the next 10 days. <laughs> but it is a very cool special. We'll still be here. We got to hear some uh, previews of what you guys are going to hear, and it sounds really, really cool. A lot Appreciate of people it. around here have put many, many hours into the special, and you will enjoy it. And uh, we'll be here to take phone calls and emails. and Yeah, we'll be here to push some buttons. So We'll goof around with you, you know, off the air. Off the air, yes. We'll do our little radio show uh for you on the phones tomorrow. Private. You know, we'll, we'll pop all ten lines and do the show for ten people at a clip. That's a good idea. <laughs> Might be more listeners, actually. 